Hello my friends, I was wondering what if I share the story about Bhattasala Jataka. This is not only a story, but it share a lot of information about how Buddha's relatives were slain and why and how Buddha used to be uh, love his relatives, love his kinsmen. So uh, I hope uh, you will like this story. So this is the Badasala Jataka. The story, the Badasala Jataka is very short, but before that, we have a lot of uh, story, a lot of information and details about the King Kosala, about the Sakyans, and about how the King Kosala wanted to be friend with uh, Sakyans so he can have more uh, monks in his house, in his palace, so the monks will take meal at his palace. So let's start. I hope you will enjoy listening to this story. So this story is from the book 12, which is Dwa Dasa Nipata in Pali. And this is 465th Jataka, Baddhasala Jataka. <clears throat> Who are thou, etc. This story the master told while dwelling in Jetavan about doing good to one's kith and kin. At Savati, in the house of another Pindika, there was always unfailing food for five hundred brethren, and the same with Visaka, the king and the king of Kosala. But in the king's palace, various and fine as was the fare given, no one was friendly to the brethren. The result was the brethren never ate in the palace, but they took their food and went off to eat it at the house of another Pindika or Visaka or some other of their trusted friends. One day the king said, A present has been brought. Take this to the brethren and send it to the refectory. An answer was brought that no brethren was there in the refectory. Where are they gone? He asked. They were sitting in their friends' houses to eat, was the reply. So the king, after his morning meal, came into the master's presence and asked him, Good sir, what is the best kind of food? The food of friendship is the best, great king, said he. Even sour rice gruel given by a friend becomes sweet. Well, sir, with whom do the brethren to find friendship? With their kindred, great king, or with the Sakya families? Then the king thought, what if he were to make a Sakya girl his queen concert? Then the brethren would be his friends, as it were with their own kindred. So rising from his seat, he returned to the palace and sent a message to Kapilavattu to this effect. Please give me one of your daughters in marriage, for I wish to become connected with your family. On receipt of this message, the Sakyans gathered together and deliberated. We live in a place subject to the authority of the king of Kosala. If we refuse a daughter, he will be very angry, and if we give her, the custom of our clan will be broken. What are we to do? Then Mahanama said to them, Do not trouble about it. I have a daughter named Vasabhakatiya. Her mother is a slave woman, Nagamunda by name. She is some sixteen years of age, of great beauty and auspicious prospects, and by her father's side noble. We'll send her as a girl nobly born. The Sakyas agreed and sent for the messengers and said they were willing to give a daughter of the clan and that they might take her with them at once. But the messengers reflected, These Sakyas are desperately proud in matters of birth. Suppose they should send a girl who was not of them and say that she was so we will take none but one who eats along with them. So they replied, Well, we will take her, but we will take one who eats along with you. 
The Sakyas assigned a lodging for the messengers and then wondered what to do. Mahanama said, Now, do not trouble about it. I will find a way. At my mealtime, bring in Vasabhakatya dressed up in her finery. Then, just as I have taken one mouthful, produce a letter and say, My lord, such a king has sent you a letter. Be pleased to hear his message at once. They agreed, and as he was taking his meal, they dressed and adorned the maid. Bring my daughter, said Mahanama, and let her take food with me. In a moment, said they, as soon as she is properly adorned, and after a short delay, they brought her in, expecting to take food with her father. She dipped her hand into the same dish. Mahanama had taken one mouthful with her, put it in his mouth, but just as he stretched out his hand for another, they brought him a letter saying, My lord, such a king has sent a letter to you. Be pleased to hear his message at once, said Mahanama. Go on with your meal, my dear. And he's holding his right hand in the dish with his left to the letter, look at it, and look at it. As he examined the message, the maiden went on eating. When she had eaten, he washed his hand and rinsed out his mouth. The messengers were firmly convinced that she was his daughter, for they did not divine the secret. So the Mahanama sent away his daughter in great pomp. The messengers brought her to Savati and said that this maiden was the true, was the true born daughter of Mahanama. The king was pleased, caused the whole city to be decorated, and placed her upon a pile of treasure, and by ceremonial sprinkling made her his ship queen. She was dear to the king and beloved. In a short time, the queen conceived. The king caused the proper treatment to be used, and at the end of ten months, she brought forth a son whose color was a golden brown. On the day of his naming, the king sent a message to his grandmother, saying, A son has been born to Vasabhakatya, daughter of the Sakya king. What shall his name be? Now, the, court, the courier who was charged with his, this message was slightly deaf, but he went and told the king's grandmother. When she heard it, heard it she said, Even when, was, when Vasabhakatya had never born a son, she was more than all the world, and now she will be the king's darling. The deep Deaf man did not hear the word darling aright, but thought she said Vidudaba. So back when so back he went to the king and told him that he was to name the prince Vidudaba. This the king thought must be some ancient family name, and so named him Vidudaba. After this prince grew up treated as prince should be. When he was at the age of seven years, having observed how the other princes received the presents of toy elephants and horses and other toys from the family of their mothers, father, fathers, the lad said to his mother, Mother, the rest of them get presents from their mother's family, but no one sends me anything. Are you an orphan? Then she replied, My boy, your grandsires are the Sakya kings, but they live a long way off, and that is why they send you nothing. Again, when he was sixteen, he said, Mother, I, will, I want to see your father's family. Don't speak of it, child, she said. What will you do when you get there? But though she Put him off, he asked her again and again. At last his mother said, Well, go then. So the lad 
got his father's consent and set out with a number of followers, Vasabhakatya sent a letter before him to this effect. I'm living here happily. Let not my masters tell him anything of the secret. But the Sakyas, on hearing of the coming of Vidudaba, sent off all their young children into the country. It is impossible, said they, to receive him with respect. When the prince arrived at Kaplavatu, the Sakyas had assembled in the royal rest house. The prince approached the rest house and, await, and waited. Then they say to him, This is your mother's father, this is her brother. Pointing them out, he walked from one to the other, saluting them. But although he bowed to them till his back ached, not one of them vouchsafed a greeting. So he asked, Why is it that none of you greet me? The Sakyas replied, My dear, youngest princes are all in the country. Then they entertained him grandly. After a few days' stay, he set out for home with all his retinue. Just then a slave woman washed the seed which he had used in the rest house with milk water, saying insultingly, Here is the seed where sat the son of Vasavakatya, the slave girl. A man who had left his spear behind was just fetching it when he overheard the abuse of Pr Prince Vidudaba. He asked what it meant. He was told that Vid Vasabhakati was born of a slave to Mahanama, the Sakya. This he told to the soldiers. A great uproar aroused all shouting. Vasabhakati is a slave woman's daughter, so they say. The prince heard it. Yes, thought he, let them pour milk water over, seed I set in, to wash it. When I am king, I will wash the place with, the, with their heart's blood. When he returned to Savati, the couriers told the whole matter to the king. The king was enraged against the Sakyas for giving him a slave's daughter to wife. He cut off all allowances made to the Vasabhakatiya and her son and gave them only what is proper to be given to slave men and women. Some few days later, the master came to the palace and took a seat. The king approached him and with a greeting said, Sir, I am told that your clansmen gave me a slave's daughter to wife. I have cut off their allowances, mother and son, and grant them only what slaves would get, said the master. The Sakyas have done wrong, O oh, great king. If they gave any one, they ought to have given a girl of their own blood. But, O oh, king, this I say, Vasapakatya is a king's daughter, and in the house of a noble king, she has received the ceremonial sprinkling. Vidudaba too was begotten by a noble king. Wise men of old have said, What matters the mother's birth? The birth of the father is the measure, and to a poor wife a picker of sticks. They gave the positions of queen consort, and the son born of her obtained the sovereignty of the banners, twelve leagues in extent, and became King Katavahana, the wood carrier, whereupon he told him the story of the Katahari birth. When the king heard this speech, he was pleased, and saying to himself, The father's birth is the measure of the man, he again gave mother and son the treatment suited to them now the king's commander-in-chief was a man named bandula his wife malika was barren and he sent her away to kusinara telling her to return to her own family i will go said she when i have saluted the master she went to jetvana and greeting the tatagata stood waiting on one side where are you going? he asked. She replied, My husband has sent me home. Sir, why? asked the master. I am barren. Sir, I have no son. If that is all, said he, there is no reason why you should go. Return. 
She was much pleased and saluting the master went home again. Her husband asked her why she had come back. She answered, The Dasabala sent me back, my lord. Then, said the commander-in-chief, the Tathagata must have seen good reason. The woman soon after conceived, when her cravings began, told him of it. What is, what is it you want? he asked. My lord, said she, I desire to go and bathe and drink the water of the Tango in Vesali city, where the families of the kings get water for the ceremonial sprinkling. The commander-in-chief promised to try. Seizing his bow, strong as thousand bows, he put his wife in a chariot and left Sawati, drove his chariot to Vesali. Now at this time there lived close to the gate a Lichavi named Mahali, who had been educated by the same teacher as the king of Kosala's general Bandula. This man was blind and used to advise the Lichavis on all matters temporal or spiritual. Hearing the clatter of the chariot as it went over the threshold, he said, The noise of the chariot of Bandula, the Malian. This day there will be fear for the Lichavis. By the tank there was set a strong guard within and without. Above it was spread an iron net. Not even a bird could find room to get through. But the general, dismounting from the, his car, put the guards to flight with the, blow, with the blows of his sword and burst through the iron network, and in the tank bathed his wife and gave her to drink of the water. Then after bathing himself, he set the Malika in the chariot and left the town, went back by the way he came. The guards went and told all Lichavis, then were the kings of the Lichavis angry, and five hundred of them, mounted in five hundred chariots, departed to capture Bandula the Malian. They informed Mahali of it. He said, Go not, for he will slay you all. But they said, Nay, we will go. Then he if you come to a place where a wheel has sunk up to the nave, you must return. If you return not, then return back from the place when you hear the noise of a thunderbolt. If then you turn not, turn back from the place where you shall see a hole in front of your chariot. Go no further. But they did not turn back according to his word, but pursued on and on. Malika espied them and said, There are chariots in sight, my lord. Then tell me, said he, when they all look like one chariot, when they all in a line look like one, she said, My lord, I see as it were the head of one chariot. Take the reins then, said he, gave the reins into her hands. He stood upright in the chariot and strung his bow. The chariot wheel sank into the earth nave deep. The Lichavis came to the place and saw it, but turned not back. The other went on a little further and twanked the bowstring. Then came a noise as the noise of a thunderbolt. Yet even then they turned not, but pursued on and on. Bundle stood up in the chariot and spared a shaft, and, a, and it cleft the hats of all the five hundred chariots and passed right through the five hundred kings in the place where the girdle is fastened and then buried itself in the earth. They, not perceiving that they were wounded, pursued still, shouting, Stop! Holua! Stop! Bandula stopped his chariot and said, You are dead men. I cannot fight with the dead. What? said they. Dead such as we now are, lose the girdle of the first man, said Bandula. They loosed his girdle, and at the instant the girdle was loosed, he fell dead. Then he said to them, You are all of you in the same condition. Go to your homes, and set in order what should be ordered, and give your direction to your wives and families, and then 
doff your armor. They did so and then all of them gave up the ghost.